What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and today we're continuing our gaming on series with SD cards, answering the question, can you actually use them as game storage devices like what we used to use on cartridges in older gaming systems? Now SD cards are super portable and these days come in with large capacities in their very small form factor. Heck, even micro SD cards are getting pretty large in their storage departments, but are they really good enough to play any games? games on them. Now, in theory, one would say, yes, you can play games off an SD card. They're a storage medium, you can read to them, you can write from them, basically meaning you can play games from them. But are they fast enough and really are they that reliable enough to be playing any video games off them? Now, with that being said, thanks to modern SD cards offering speeds that are faster than some old hard drives even, the gaming experience, one would say, shouldn't be too bad. But before we do jump into the gaming performance and really take a look there, we do need to take a look at the SD card that we're going to be using for these tests and what you should be considering if you are going to be using an SD card for your gaming setup. Now, it's also to no surprise that modern HDDs and SSDs are much faster than actual SD cards. Whilst SD cards are getting much faster thanks to the fact that 4K, 8K standards are coming down the line, SD cards are much faster than what they used to be, but they're not exactly as fast as your traditional, again, hard drive or SSD storage media. Now for today's testing, I picked up my SanDisk Extreme Pro V30 SD card offering a rated 95 megabytes per second on the reads and writes. Now you may notice the one that I'm holding up right here is a 32 gig one because my 64 gig one is in the camera and uh, I tend to record quite a bit of uh, video and then seem to splice it up into, well, a short video that you're going to be watching here. So a larger SD card is needed for my camera as that data rate is rather large. But again, it is the SanDisk 64 gigabyte Extreme Pro V30 card offering the rated reads and write speeds on the screen right here. Now you may notice that V lettering here. In previous generations of SD cards, we would generally care about what class it is, class two, class six, eight, or even class class 10. However, with that being said, the class system's kind of not really that important, especially when it comes to the video side and also to high speed memory cards, whereas we want to be looking at that V number. So my SD cards I have right here today are known as V30 class, whereas they go up to V90, offering your 4K and 8K settings at up to 120 FPS and are rated for higher transfer speeds. So if you are going for the fastest of fastest, don't necessarily look at the traditional class rating, look at the V rating for the SD card, going up to V90 at the time of recording. These particular SD cards offer 90 megabytes per second on the reads and writes and offer much better standards, whereas our existing cards only offer a maximum speed of 30 megabytes per second on their standard rating. Now, do keep in mind that just because the standard is rated at 30 megabits per second, or megabytes per second rather, that doesn't necessarily mean that manufacturers have to adhere to that. For example, my cards are about 90 or so read and writes on each side, so they're relatively good quality there. Though, we'll touch on the actual speeds of the hardware that I have in just a moment. But again, if you do want to go for the best of the best, fastest of the fastest for something like this, do look at a V90 card. But keep in mind, V90 cards are still relatively new to the market, so they're only going up to about 128 gigs at the time of recording, but are likely to go into the 512s and even one terabytes in the not too distant future. So again, when shopping for an SD card to game on, do look for the fastest V rating you can get, and that will give you a much better experience than a card without a V rating or with a lower speeded V rating. Now, not to mention, we also do need to look at the card reader that we are using. Again, we do have our fairly fast SD card, but we can't take advantage of that if the card reader we want to use isn't as fast as what the card can actually offer. So for today's testing, we use the SanDisk Image Mate all-in-one card reader. The box has been up behind me for quite some time, and I've been using that card reader for quite some time. Now, this is a USB 3 card reader that does support the full speeds of these standards and does a fairly decent job here. Also too, a standard USB 3.0 card reader is also too just fine. In fact, my Oroco little yellow craptastic thing that lives in my bag was able to produce exactly the same numbers as the more expensive SanDisk card reader. So if you don't have a ton of money, just make sure you get a USB 3 card reader that is going to be running at 
USB 3 speeds. Heck, even a USB 3.1 card reader would definitely be okay as well. Now, if you are planning to use your laptop's card reader, do keep in mind that not all laptop card readers are going to be running at USB 3.0 speeds. 90% of them out there are actually wired up for USB 2, so you won't be able to take advantage of your full speed card. So, if you're planning on doing gaming on the go with your laptop, do make sure you get a card reader anyway, because again, a lot of the time they're not running at full USB 3 speeds. There are a few models out there that do run full USB 3 card readers, but the most of the time you are just going to be looking at USB 2 speeds. So with that being said, these are the SD cards, those are the card readers that you can grab, let's take a look at the gaming experience. The first thing I did was whack the SD card in a reader, chuck it in my desktop PC, and see whether it even showed up in the Steam library, and surprisingly enough, it absolutely worked fine. I was really, really surprised that it was just plug and play with the SD card and there was no problems there. As there are some programs such as Crystal Disk Info that won't actually pick up SD cards as something that they can read because they're kind of really easy to remove and it just doesn't work on those programs. But Steam picked up the SD card, no problems. I added a Steam folder, loaded my games onto that, although I could only load a few onto the 64 gigs of storage and it was pretty much ready to go at that. But first, let's run a crystal disk test. And take a look at the numbers, they weren't actually too bad. With decent reads and writes for an SD card, the gaming performance shouldn't be too bad. Now do keep in mind that just a moment ago, I mentioned that these SD cards that I have, have a rated speed of 30 megabytes per second on the right section. And you may notice that this is quite far from 30 megabytes per second. That's mainly because SanDisk are actually fairly well known at making pretty decent products, and and it runs faster than the actual spec that it is spec for. So yes, some cards will run uh, faster, but it is just sort of what you do get there. So Extreme Pro cards, again, are something that I strongly recommend. But now that we've taken a look at the theoretical performance, let's jump into some gaming performance. I loaded up the games, hit play, and had to wait for a very, very long time. Even though these SD cards are fairly fast as SD cards do go, unfortunately, it was very slow to actually load the games. For reference, GTA 5 takes around the two minute marker to actually load up on my desktop PC. Whereas over on the actual uh, SD card side, we were looking at more in the five minute marker. This is just because SD cards are slower, thus it takes a little bit more time to actually transfer over. Other games that weren't as sort of intense in terms of loading as GTA 5 was obviously loaded a lot faster than the sort of slower times, but all of them were consistently slower than the SSD or hard drive options. So if you are going straight on speed with an SD card, they may not necessarily be as fast as your typical storage medium. But with that being said, once we actually managed to load into the games and I waited around for what felt like forever for games to load, I actually got a really decent experience. There was no FPS loss, no stuttering, no lag or anything like that that you would expect from a slow drive. Once this thing loaded up, it was basically good to go. FPS on the i7 system that we usually do our testing was basically unaffected, again thanks to the fact that storage doesn't exactly affect well, the performance of your games, and overall, once again, we did load up the games, it was perfectly playable. Some games did experience longer load times in things like cutscenes and new locations that you'd be going to, but overall, it was very, very hard to tell once the games loaded up the difference between the SSD, the hard drive, or even an SD card. So, overall, can you game on an SD card? In short, yes, it is definitely possible. Is it practical? Not exactly. The games did take quite a bit of time to actually load off the SD card, not to mention the fact that SD cards are relatively expensive compared to larger mechanical drives or just even SSDs in general. For reference, the V90 uh, SD card that I did talk about here today in the 120GB flavour from SanDisk costs quite a bit of cash. For reference, you could buy this uh, external hard drive for around the same price as that SD card, meaning you're getting much more gaming space and a lot more just, I guess, performance overall as you're not necessarily limited to the slower speeds of an SD card. If you can go ahead and live with slower load speeds, it's actually a really nice and small practical way to move games around. If you don't mind paying that premium for the small form factor, they're really, really cool there. Now, with that being said, I didn't necessarily test micro SD cards, though as long as they are delivering the same speeds or roughly the same speeds as their bigger brothers, you shouldn't really see too much of an actual difference. But again, a full-size mechanical hard drive for around the same price as even one of these 32 gig cards is going to be delivering you much better load times 
there. But do let me know down in that comment section how you go ahead and transfer games around. Do you like the idea of having small little cartridges with a bunch of games on them, or do you prefer just a larger mechanical drive options? Do let me know down below. Otherwise, guys, if you want to pick up these Sandisk cards that I did talk about, the ones that I used in these videos and the V90 that I did talk about, I'll leave them linked down in that description box. They're pretty good there, but there's also two, a couple options I also too left, so do check that description box. Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Wow.